So you are probably thinking, menus, schmenus, and I don't blame you. We are about to brew some espresso, and trust me, I need one. Now, it's as simple as pushing buttons on the screen using the capacitive touch. As you've noticed, there are icons for our drinks, and that's how we'll be brewing. But you want to see this machine in action, and so do I. So let's get to it. All right, so it's time to start brewing. Now, I'm assuming that this is going to be the first time that you're using your machine. And I need to do my due diligence to let you know that the first couple of shots that you brew are not going to be terrific because what needs to happen is the grinder needs to get used to your coffee and you need to get the brew group properly filled with your correct dose before you can really start extracting crema rich espresso. This is not a new magenta. I have put it through its paces. However, I am going to do my best to approximate what your first shot may look like. And to approximate this, I'm just going to use the pre-ground function um, to do another blank shot as we had shown, and we'll get started. And that is the artist's rendition of the first shot that you could pull on pretty much any super automatic machine, myself, of course, being the artist in this case, uh, I do not want to save that. I want to forget that. But you'll find that, again, by the time you've brewed maybe your third shot of espresso, the Gacha adapting system, which is the algorithm inside the grinder, will really have learned your coffee and you will begin brewing very rich, very delicious shots of espresso. So if your very first shot does not look drinkable, that is totally normal, keep on brewing, it's only going to get better. So for starters, let's just take a look at the traditional espresso. We've got a pretty basic setup here with 1.3 ounces, and if you look at the strength setting, that corresponds between 6.5 and 11.5 grams of ground coffee. Now, I pretty much always use the full 5 bean strength here. I say bean because on other machines this is indicated by multiple little cute bean icons. We've only got a single bean with like a little swirl action going on around him there, but uh, always bump up to temperature high. Now, granted, as I said, if you really want an extra strong drink, we can do the times two, which I will demo in a moment. But so let's just say we like our parameters though. We'll go ahead and press start. And this is how you brew a shot. and we will save this setting, and that's how you'd make your espresso. All right, so that was a single espresso. Let's take a look, though, at the double espresso. Now, I'm picking an espresso because it is a smaller drink. We don't want these glasses overflowing. The only thing overflowing in this video, in this case, is going to be my excitement. So let's go ahead and switch this to a times two. This is going to grind and brew these drinks twice. Let's go ahead and do that now. And just like that, we have got two fully caffeinated beverages in one go. So that handles our short drinks, but let's say that we want a full cup of coffee. Now, as I mentioned, we do have a coffee option here, which can be programmed to eight ounces. But in my opinion, the preferred full cup option on these machines is of course going to be the Americano. Now, before we do that though, let's take a moment actually to make a bit of an adjustment on the machine here. So this cup riser again is one of my favorite features. This is a stainless steel piece and we have nice rubber grips across the top. So that's terrific, especially if you've got smaller cups that might otherwise kind of rattle or slide during brewing because of the vibration from both the grinder or the pump. Now, this eliminates that, and it also can eliminate the distance between your spouts and your cup. Now, the nice thing is I was able to simply remove that, and we can now fit our taller cup here for our Americano. Defaulting, we've got 1.5 ounces of coffee and about five ounces of water. Let's take a look now at making a one-touch Americano on the magentas.
And there is our One Touch Americano. Now, just to go over a couple of the particulars about how a drink like this would differ, say, from the Espresso Lungo or the coffee option on this machine, it all comes down to how it's actually prepared. Now, as you noticed, the Americano more or less pulled a shot of espresso and then added additional water to it to basically fill up the rest of our cup. Now, if you're making a coffee, say, for example, the difference there is going to be that all of the water for this drink will be pulled through that coffee. Now, the key difference there is in the extraction. So with the espresso, we are focusing on extracting maybe the sweetest, most flavorful, richest aspects of the coffee that are the most quickly dissolved and extracted. If we're to continue extracting, you will begin to pull out different kinds of flavors from those grounds. And so in some people's opinion, that tends to be a little bit more harsh and a little bit more bitter. The Americano brings you the best of both worlds, offering you really the best parts of your shot that are extracted, and then still evening out that flavor and kind of smoothing things out with the addition of water for a more traditional American style cup of coffee, hence the name Americano, and it really is one of my favorites. So for our last drink on the baseline magenta, we're gonna take a look at making an espresso using pre-ground coffee. So we'll simply enter the espresso uh, drink menu here and switch to our scoop icon. Now, where's our scoop? Well, got a little scoop surprise in our pre-ground. So my advice to anyone who wants to use the bypass doser is to follow this procedure to guarantee success because there are a few things that you need to avoid doing if you're going to successfully use the bypass doser. One is that we do not want to pack our coffee into the scoop, and the second is that we do not want to overfill the scoop as well. If you do either of these things, you can basically max out the pressure of your brew group, and the machine will dump your whole shot, and then basically you'll have wasted that shot of espresso and some of your time, especially. So if you've got guests, say, who are waiting, or you're doing this in the morning, you know, don't want to do that. Now, my recommendation for procedure, of course, is to start with kind of a heaping scoop, and you want to give that a shake, basically to fill up any crevices. So we want to maximize the amount of space inside the scoop that we're filling, but we're not compacting anything. Then, with either a knife or your finger, you can basically go ahead now and just even that off. So if you like baking or anything like that, you've ever leveled off flour, kind of, kind of like that, right? So now for our espresso, all we need to do is simply open up the bypass hatch on the top and gently load our pre-ground in. And I just gave the scoop a little bit of a tap and it kind of fell out in a nice piece there. So we'll press start stop now and it's gonna start brewing. So just get that coffee loaded in before we start. And you'll see we're able to produce a delicious full-bodied crema-rich shot of espresso even using pre-ground coffee. Now, before I let you go, however, there are a couple of nuances that I do want to cover with using the bypass doser. First of all, you can't just use any pre-ground coffee. You need to make sure that the coffee you're using is ground for espresso. That is essential to guaranteeing that you actually have enough back pressure and resistance to the oncoming water that you can extract a shot. If you use just like pre-ground coffee for drip or what have you, it's not going to work. The other thing too, though, is that the freshness of your pre-ground matters just as much as the freshness of your whole beans. Now, if you've had that can of pre-ground, you know, in the cupboard, uh, next to the dog food or whatever, you haven't touched it in years, you have a guest come over, they're like, oh, you know, I want the decaf, and then, you know, that just so happens to be the pre-ground, make sure that you're brewing with something fresh, something nice. This is a terrific option, say, for instance, if you do have decaf drinkers as guests, and you've got whole beans that are caffeinated loaded into the grinder, just use some pre-ground, make sure it's good, and you'll get good shots with it. And that's brewing using pre-ground on the magenta.